Welcome to Surgical Endodontics, the latest in a series of introductory lectures by me, Endogal. Today we'll be reviewing and summarizing the section on surgical endodontics from the sixth edition of the Guide to Clinical Endodontics put forth by the AAE. The following procedures will be included in our video. Incision and drainage, tephanation, apicoectomy, root end filling, periradicular curatage, root resection, intentional replantation, and finally removal of an apical segment of a fractured root. Before we discuss different surgical procedures, we should go over the AAE's biopsy recommendations. They suggest to take a biopsy if enough tissue can be removed for histopathological examination. Additionally, they recommend this if the pathology is persistent or inconsistent with endodontic disease. Additionally, a biopsy should be taken as indicated by the patient's medical history. For example, if the patient has a history of cancer or is systemic osseous disease. Remember that a biopsy is the removal of a soft or hard tissue specimen for histological examination. The first procedure we'll take a look at is incision and drainage. This procedure is indicated when we have a localized soft tissue swelling and pain due to such swelling, which we expect will drain if incised. Additionally, this can be done to collect a sample, usually for bacterial analysis. The procedure involves surgically opening the soft tissue and can include the placement of a drain. Additionally, antibiotics may be prescribed if there is diffuse swelling, known as cellulitis, if there have been systemic symptoms like fever and malaise, or if the patient is immunocompromised. Now I'll draw a schematic of incision and drainage. Here we have a sagittal view of an anterior tooth with pulpal necrosis and a periradicular pathology. Sometimes such lesions can tunnel through the bone and lead to a localized fluctuant soft tissue swelling, which I'll show here. In this procedure, an incision is made, usually with a surgical blade, to release exudate or decompress the swelling. A temporary drain can be placed to allow for continuous drainage if needed. Next, we'll cover tephanation. Similar to incision and drainage, it is done when we need a pathway to drain exudate. However, this is a pathway through hard tissue. Again, this can be performed in order to collect a sample for bacterial analysis. This procedure involves surgical perforation of alveolar cortical bone to release intraosseous exudate. It may or may not involve the placement of a temporary drain or the prescription of antibiotics if indicated. Again, we have our sagittal view of an anterior tooth with pulpal necrosis and a periradicular pathology. However, unlike the previous case, the exudate is confined within the bone. So in order to get at this exudate and relieve that pressure that is built up, we could use a round burr as shown here to make a perforation through the bone and to the swelling. Next on our list is the apicoectomy, also known as root end resection. It is indicated when we encounter persistent or worsening periapical pathology after endodontic treatment. It is also indicated when the apical part of a root canal system with periapical pathology cannot be accessed via a non-surgical route. 
This procedure involves elevating a mucoperiosteal flap and removing bone as needed to see and access the apex. Next, we would flatten the apex by removing the root end and associated soft tissues. Apicoectomies are often done in conjunction with two other procedures. The first of these is periradicular curatage, where diseased and reactive tissue, as well as any foreign material at the apex of an endodontically treated tooth, is removed. The other is a root end filling, where after an apicoectomy is performed, the root end is prepared and filled with a biologically compatible material. On this slide, I will show you the difference between an apicoectomy versus just performing periradicular curatage, as well as how they're usually done in conjunction with one another. So again, we have our sagittal view, this time of an endotreated tooth with persistent periapical pathology. So after raising a flap and removing bone as needed to see and access the apical region, curatage would simply involve removal of the reactive and diseased tissue and any foreign material present. At this point, we could continue and perform a separate procedure called an apicoectomy, where the root end is removed and the most apical part of the root is flattened. Then we might go a step further and prepare the root end and fill it with a biologically compatible material. So here we have periapical curatage, and here we have an apicoectomy with a root end filling. Next, we'll look at root resection, which is also known as root amputation. It is indicated when we have a multi-rooted tooth where at least one of these roots is sound and one root has either a frication defect and a severe infrabony defect, or something like a vertical root fracture, which is confined to one root, which can be removed, inoperable caries, resorptive defects, or perforations on that one root, um, it can also be done in the case of persistent apical pathosis, where non-surgical root canal or periradicular surgery just isn't possible. For this procedure, we would ideally want for the root canal treatment and permanent restoration to have been completed before the root resection takes place. Then we would be able to form or to perform the root amputation or hemisection. Here I'll draw our multi-rooted tooth with frication involvement, infrabony defect, and periapical pathology, mainly affecting one root while the other is sound. Hemisection, which is also known as vertical cut technique, is done when the tooth is sectioned through the frication, allowing the affected root and crown to be removed. A horizontal root resection, on the other hand, involves amputating the root and pre preserving the crown. It is usually done to preserve existing prostheses. The next procedure we'll cover will be intentional replantation. To be considered, this case must meet all of the following criteria. It must have periradicular pathology following endodontic treatment, where non-surgical and periradicular surgical treatments are not possible or have a poor prognosis for example, due to adjacent anatomical structures. The tooth must also be able to be extracted without a high likelihood of fracture. Additionally, it must have an acceptable periodontal status. This procedure involves extracting the tooth completing a root end filling or root repair, and then intentionally replanting the tooth in its socket, either with or without stabilization. Here I'll draw our endodontically treated tooth 
with persistent periapical pathology. First, this tooth is going to be extracted and removed from its socket. Next, the root end in question will be filled or repaired. Then, the tooth is replanted in its socket and possibly stabilized. The final procedure we'll cover today is the surgical removal of a fractured apical segment. It is indicated when a fracture in the apical region of a root leads to pulpal necrosis. To be considered for this procedure, the coronal portion of this tooth must be restorable and functional. This procedure involves raising a mucoperiosteal flap, removing bone as needed to visualize and access the fractured portion of the root, then the apical portion and targeted surrounding tissues are removed. Root end resection or filling might be indicated at the time that the root fragment is removed. Additionally, guided tissue regeneration or bone replacement may be used if needed. Here I'll draw a sagittal view of an anterior tooth with a fracture in the apical portion of the root, which has led to pulpal necrosis. The first thing I will show is that the mucoperiosteal flap is raised. This is so that we can have direct view and access to the bone so that it can be removed to access the area in question. With this view, bone is removed for access and visualization. Then apical root and surrounding tissues are targeted and removed. Finally, root end resection and root filling may be indicated and included in this procedure. Here is a summary slide of the procedures we went over in today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you have a great day.